أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد أرسلنا إلى أمم من قبلك فأخذناهم بالبأساء والضراء لعلهم يتضرعون Surely we sent messengers to the nations before you Thereafter فأخذناهم we seized them بالبأساء والضراء with adversity and trouble and hardship so they may humble and so they may plead to Allah Azza wa Jal with humility. فَلَوْلَا So why is it not that when they when came to them our punishment بَأْسُنَا this بَأْسَ this adversity from us why was it that when this such an adversity hit them that was sent by us why did they not humble themselves before Allah why did they not plead to him um, in humility but their hearts became hard their hearts hardened and shaitan zayyana lahum shaitan adorned before them and it made it look nice whatever whatever they were doing so shaitan made it appear appealing to, to, to them whatever they were indulging in so when they totally forgot, when they forgot that which they had been reminded with, our signs, our verses, our ayat, our messages, that everything, and the ba'sa and the ra as well, when they forgot all that they had been warned with, they had been reminded with, we opened upon them the channels, the gates, the doors of everything. So much so that when they became excited and they became very happy and they rejoiced with that that they were given with, we seized them, we captured them suddenly without giving them a chance to, to kind of um, get their, yeah, 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 recollect themselves and, 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 with, and them to, without, without, without an, any opportunity for them to repent. So when they were seized, now they realized that it was too late for them to repent. So they became hopeless. They became dumbfounded. They had no hope remaining. So there, those who were who had wronged, those who were in the wrong path, their remnants, and there was just putia, it was all cut off. There was nothing that was left of them. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And the universe, the worlds, continued to belong to Allah, and Allah Azza wa Jal endowed. Did He did not lose anything? Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the of the worlds, who cleanses earth after it gets polluted by the conduct of the wrongdoers. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are about four verses that we looked at. and they talk about these four verses. They talk about a very unique Sunnatullah. Which, we, which Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran over and over again. You will never find that the Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal ever changes. So the Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal, the way He governs the, the universe, his, his principles, they remain the same. So one, that, one such Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is just mentioned in these four verses, is that with, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides man as well. And when man forgets and he loses the path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers to, to remind people to guide them to the right path. So these messengers came to every continent on the earth. I think at the start of Surah Al-An'am, we talked about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and we mentioned that the that Middle East became the center and the focus of Hidayat. The messengers were raised, and the messengers were raised in other continents as well, in Africa, in Far East, and other parts of the of the of the globe. Messengers were sent, and they Allah, here Allah Taala says, so they reminded people. They asked them. They invited them to the right path, and people were reluctant. Obviously, they were happy with whatever evil, whatever what they, they were indulging in. So they refused to budge. When, they, when this happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threw, threw at them hardship and difficulty. 
limited difficulty, limited hardship. So this would give them an opportunity to realize that they were not in control. Somebody else was in control. So they realized that they couldn't control life. And despite their best management skills, they were losing control of things. So somebody else was in control. So they had to turn to him in, in dua, in pleading. And this was expected that they would realize their, their, fee, their feeble nature and their weaker nature. But the hope was that they would realize they'll come to some sense. But then Allah SWT says, some did come to sense, like Yunus al Islam's people, but they were very few. Majority, they did not humble themselves. They did not got on their knees. They did to, to before Allah. In fact, they became stubborn. Qasat They became stubborn. Wazayyir lahu shaytan. And rather than feeling that they, rather than having a sense of remorse, they were they were content with whatever whatever they were doing. Wazayyir lahu shaytan. Shaytan did not make them realize that they what that their conduct was evil. So they thought that the evil conduct was a good one, a praiseworthy one. So then the Sunnah of Allah is that this dunya is not a place of jaza. The place of reward and recompense is in the hereafter. In this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when people did not take heed from, from such reminder, from such a warning, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then we open up the channel, open for them the channels of provision in worldly life and the, 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 the heavens rain down on them the comfort and the joys and the ease and the material uh, yani opportunities and they may they amass wealth then it becomes such that they start they indulge to such an extent that they feel that they do not need to mend anything so that is when they become totally immersed in that evil conduct, they are seized suddenly by Allah and they, they are they are eliminated in their entirety from the planet Earth. And then the planet planet Earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends another people to occupy those lands. And the life on Earth continues, but the wrongdoers and the evil ones, they are eliminated and wiped out. So this is Sunnatullah. It happens to nations and communities. Then it happens to individuals as well. And a person, the, the lessons to, to, to be learned from this, inshallah, will continue after the Zuhr prayer. After the Asr prayer, I'm sorry, we have to take a break after just such a short start. But I, I think this will get better in the days, in, in the weeks ahead. But for today, we'll take a, take a break until about 10 past 2, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, um, no, we're starting, we couldn't start at 10 past because I didn't realize Asr here in the Masjid was at two o'clock today. So we finished just now, uh, made it back into the office. So inshallah, we'll start now, inshallah. I think there's someone, there's Asr at 2.15 in Glasgow. So they must be praying. So we'll give them a couple of more minutes, inshallah. It's at around about 2.25. I hope that is okay with everyone. Apologies for the misunderstanding and the confusion. But inshallah, we'll resume in about five minutes. Assalamu okay. alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just sitting here on the computer at the time, not keeping an eye on the clock. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. So we were looking at um, I have 41 to 45, I think. Qutul al-Dhabir al-Qawm al-Ladheena dhalamu. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So here I was, I was talking about sunnatullah. 
Sunnatullah is a very interesting subject in the Quran al um, If someone could go through all the Sunnatullah, every way that Sunnatullah is discussed, like Sunnatullah is discussed in this ayat, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manages the universe. And Ahlul Ilm are aware of it. They know, and it's not been documented, I've not come across a book called titled Sunnatullah or some article on this subject, but it would be interesting if someone compiles such a list. Um, so one of the one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, with one of the principles is that everybody gets a chance to repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws two types of tests. One is the easy one and the other one is the hard one. The easy test is that a person is put through adversity, put through some difficulty. There are two words mentioned here. Al-ba'sa fa'akhadnahum bil-ba'sa iwad-darra. We test them with ba'sa, adversity, and al-darra, which is hardship. There are two types of pains. One is to do with economic life, poverty, hunger, um, lack of resources. And the other is something to do with the body, where a person becomes unwell, body parts stop functioning. Ayyub alayhi salatu waslam was put through the both, al-ba'sa wal darra And he said, Rabbi anni masani al-durru wa anta arhamur rahimin. So if you ever experience any, any such difficulty, that is the dua. Rabbi anni masani al-durru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Rabbi anni masani al-shaytanu bi nusubin wa adhaab. So those are duas which are here, which are mentioned for which which were which are mentioned in the Quran and quoted from people um, who went through hardship and they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for akhadanam bil ba'sa. So that is one tafsir. Al ba'sa means to do with the, the, the problems and hardship and mashaqqa um, and, and trouble uh, in regards to one's material uh, prosperity. And the other is al-dharra, the physical and personal. And the second is al-ba'sa, is that kind of mashaqqa, that kind of hardship, difficulty, which is combined with fear. That usually happens in warfare, where the enemies, they one becomes subject to, to, to the enemy forces. And the enemies, they harass. And the enemies, they, 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 they take control. The Prophet wasallam, when he went to Ta'if, he had that kind of experience where he was harassed and intimidated. He'd left Mecca hoping that people of Taif would be kind and they would show some 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 kind of uh, sense some, some some kind of sense. But their their response was even more hostile. And that's when the Prophet وسلم, turned to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah inni ashku ilayka dhu'fa quwwati wa qillata hidati wa hawani ala nas. So that is. Allah, um, so, so there the Prophet yani, raised his shikayat, his complaint to the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, that you have, have you handed me over to my enemies? Have you handed me, have you given my, uh, the, the, my affairs, have you given them over to, to, to those who, uh, who, who, who are hostile towards me? So that is al-ba'sa. Al-ba'sa is the warfare, is to do with the with, with lack with, with, with peace being taken away and the fear become, becoming dominant. Amn and peace is a great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this is taken away, it leads to, to, to great uh, atrocities and, uh, and, and it become, makes it very difficult for people to, to then prosper. So, and when Amn comes, usually after Amn, the ulama, again, we're talking about Sunnatullah, uh, one of one of the observation of um, that, that I learned from some elders was wherever there's amn, slowly iman comes in. Iman heads that way too. After amn and peace, usually if a piece of land is has amn, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends iman that way as well, and iman then reaches that neighborhood, that locality where there is amn. And if the amn is taken away, then iman also gradually moves out. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect us all. So al ba'sa is that where the amn is taken, peace is taken, and it's replaced with fear and hardship and, and, and trouble. And al dharra is, again, mashaqqat is, is hardship, but there is no, uh, without combining it with, uh, with fear. So al ba'sa would be, uh, we tested them with, with strife, mutual strife, mutual kind of uh, warfare, 
a mutual hostility and a dharra was just mashaqqat, just pain, lack of yeah, loss of wealth, loss of yani, whatever, the loss of uh, individuals, loss of uh, health. So that would be a dharra. So So that is the one type of test, as I mentioned. In this type of test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is throwing this at people that he does not hate. He how intends to forgive these people. These are people that deserve Allah's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hopes to forgive them. The only, this, uh, yani, this is a ni'mat in the disguise, in the guise of heart, in, uh, a test. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants people to do, to, to return to him. So it's, it's a ni'mat ultimately, it's a favor but disguised as disguised as something that is that is a trouble and that is that is adab, but it's not really adab. So that is the one type of test. And the other type of test is Fatahna alayhim abwaba kulli shay. That's not really a test, in fact. In fact, that is something which is a, a, a kind of adab, appears to be, appears to be a sign of Allah's Allah's pleasure, but in reality. It, this is the adab is disguised in, 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 in that. So people think that no, there's no concern, everything's working fine, the system's running smooth, there's nothing to worry about, and they, they're, they're indulging in, in, in the worldly pleasures, and that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just suddenly wipes them out. They're taken away suddenly. So these are the two types of tests mentioned in this ayah. One which is less harmful, and this is why the Prophet وسلم, when he would mention to his Sahaba that when the Sahaba would complain to him that oh we have it's so difficult, but we have worries of, about food and we have fear, and we have uh, yeah, 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 that we, that there isn't even enough for for anything, and we go hungry and our kids go hungry for days, and the Prophet وسلم, would say that don't worry, soon this will be replaced with prosperity and comfort, and you will have such peace that people, a woman will travel from Yemen to, to, to Mecca and she'll have fear of none other than Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ also, he would assure people that she will have such uh, prosperity that there would be no one to take zakah, to accept zakah. And the Sahaba would, would, would sit and marvel and say, Ya Rasulullah, really, is that going to happen? That would be amazing then because that will give us, that will make us free to spend our days and nights in the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will do our qiyam throughout the night and we'll fast during the day because we have, we have nothing else to do. And the Prophet said, no. Well, Antum, in fact, you are better now than that state of material prosperity and material comfort. So that these are the two, two, two tests mentioned here. So the first one is, when the first one comes, then it usually gives people opportunity to repent. This is why the Prophet when he was offered uh, material prosperity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered him, that the mounts of the mountains of Arabia would be turned into the mountains of gold for him, gold and silver for him. He said, no, but I would, I prefer, I prefer that one day I'm given food, so I'm grateful to you, my Lord. And next day, I am, uh, the food's taken away from me and I, and, and, and I, uh, I, I starve. So I beg you, my Lord, and I turn to you uh, for, for my needs. So this was the preferred lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is again Sunnatullah. So anyone, students of the Quran al we are not looking for material prosperity and the abundance of wealth and to make it into the top 500 of the richest in the UK or, or in the world. That's not our goal. That's never our ideal. That, that, that has never been our ideal. Our ideal, again, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, was one day of comfort and one day of hardship. And in, the, in between, we remain focused at Allah Azza wa Jal. So that, that the, but, but the faqr that turns into kufr, that is something that we do not want. Kadal faqr in yakuna kufran. Sometimes faqr and poverty leads to kufr. So people who have that kind of uh, temperament, they, it's, it is fard upon them to engage in the worldly efforts of earning a living for themselves and for their children. Because if they did not have enough, then they will, they're likely to walk out of the fold of Islam. So it's better for them to 
engage in the worldly efforts, um, that they, they earn a living, they, they, they have a decent life, and they feed their children. This is more uh, yani virtuous for them than engaging in celibacy and in zuhud and abstinence and moving away from dunya. That's not what they should do. In fact, that is haram for them if they have fear that this would lead them to go for. Anyway, so this is these are some basic comments about the, the about, about the elements that I mentioned here. We'll move on to the next one. So there's a word here, then they suddenly become hopeless. Mublis is that is that state of an individual when he when he gets so overwhelmed with problems and, and difficulties that his mind stops thinking. He can't think anymore. He just accepts that he feels that this is going to be this uh, this is this state of uh, distress is going to last forever and there will be no end to it many people opt for committing a suicide they, they, they opt, they opt to, to take their lives when they get into that kind of state so that is mobile soon which is translated as dumbfounded speechless they have nothing to say or they have totally despair in utter despair they lose all hope Dabir is means the foundation, the root. So they are totally uprooted. So Ustusra is translated, i.e., their roots are they uprooted, and there's no sign of them is left on the planet. Maybe this is the reason we we the about, about the about the prophets that came before Sayyidina Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam, many are not mentioned in the Quran and we do not even know the names of the prophets that came to the UK, Britain, or Europe. We do not know their names, but definitely, as Allah says, uh, uh, why is it? Uh, there, there, was, there isn't a community where we did not send a, a Bashir or a Nadir, uh, a bearer of good news or, or a warner. So, Dabir means the, the foundation, the root is removed and they are totally uprooted. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. How is this? That after Adab, Allah's Hamd is mentioned here. After Adab, it should have been that it should have been said that Allah Jabbar al Qahar, Allah al Aziz, uh, or Allah al Muhaymin al Muntaqim. Those kind of words would have been, apparently, those kind of words would have been more suited. But Allah SWT says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that the, the, which is usually expressed to which is usually said to express gratitude so the gratitude here is that are eliminated those who were causing mischief on the planet those who were who had subject subjected the weak to their torture and tyranny and harassment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eliminates them and their elimination is a favor to the poor it's a favor to the to to the weak and it's a favor to to generally, to, to the entire humanity. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all praise be to Allah for dealing with the dhulm and injustice and evil personally by, by himself. Now this is another sign, another argument of Tawheed. I, I was thinking, I started compiling a list. At the end of Surah Al-An'am, because this is a this is the first Makki surah that we're looking at. Previous surahs were all about Mad Madani surahs, where the discussion was about the the law, where the where the right and the wrong was discussed. Here, Tawheed and uh, and and Barzakh and 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 Maad and Akhirah and Hashr, the day of judgment, Jaza, that is talked about. So maybe uh, if Allah Swt gives it, gives us gives me Tawheed, then at the end I was thinking of having all the Dalail of Tawheed in this ayah. Present listed separately and say these are the denial of Tawheed, these are this, 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 that, these are the arguments of Tawheed in the surah. If Allah SWT gives you Tawheed, and shall we have it at the end, at the end of Surah Al An'am? Kul araaytum in akhad Allahu sama'akum wa abasarakum wa khatama ala kulubikum man ilahun gayrullah yatikum bi. Say, have you seen? Araaytum, have you seen? Araaytum is also, also translated as akhbirni, tell me. Okay, did you see? Okay, so have you thought about this? Did you notice? In أَخَذَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ If Allah takes away your hearing وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ And your sight وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ And He places a seal on your hearts مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِي 
which God other than Allah is there who would be able to bring it back to you? Yatikum bi, which who would be able to bring that hearing, that basira, basara, that side, the sight, uh, and that wahatama ada, that function of the hearts. Who is there anyone who would be able to restore it? No, there is no one who could restore it. Onzor, see, kaifa nusariful ayat, how we how, how we explain to them the ayat, thereafter yes, the food, they turn away and they do not take heed. So Allah Allah. What is the real of Tawheed here? The real of Tawheed here is that Allah is the one who's given to you your hearing and Allah is the one who's given to you your sight, eyesight, and Allah is the one who's granted your hearts to your emotions. It's, it's only Allah the Almighty who's able to do it. If there was anyone else, Let's imagine, contemporarily, just imagine that there was someone else. There was another Lord, another God who was there, who would say, who was controlling, who had bestowed all these favors upon man. Um, and he's aware of Allah as the result, making this such, bringing such a claim. Don't you think that this other deity or other being, the imaginative, the speculative, the assumed, don't you think he would, he would take offense from this ayat? Don't you think he would say, how dare my, uh, yani my doing, so, so someone's claiming uh, to, to what, what, what is my right, laying claim against what, what, what I'm entitled to. So if there was anyone, he would come and he would reveal another, another Quran. He would say something else and say, I am the, the Lord. And he would then deal with this person who made a false claim. And that this is Allah, the Almighty, if it was false. But there is no one. There is no one who, who dare says this, that I am the bestower of some basar and al-qulub and not Allah the Almighty. There is no one who, who would say that. And there are people who did. The false gods, like, <clears throat> I'll give you a couple of examples. Fir'aun said, Ana al And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him drown in the ocean. Disgraceful death along with his powerful armies. So this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nimrud, is to, he's talked about Nimrud, as some say, uh, who claimed to be God at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And his death, the one who's, the one who's mentioned, um, uh, who said, Inna Allah ya'tibi shamsi min al-mashat of al-maghrib inna Allah, he said, Rabbi alladhi yuhi mawta, qala ana uhi wa umid. He, the, the, that king, he want he claimed to be a, pro, a, a god too, and his death was is reported so, it, it, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made a mosquito, through a mosquito. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala called him, killed him. So those who make false claims, they are always punished by Allah Azza wa Jal, and their humiliation and disgrace is made visible to everyone. And if, this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam strictly warned against narrating a false dream, fabricating a dream, making up a dream just to impress other people and say, oh, I had such a such dream. Because someone who does so, the Prophet said, that this, this, this such a person will definitely be humiliated in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose him because he's, he's, laying, he, he's, he's, he's putting a claim um, on, on, on his divinity, on his div, uh, divine appointment, which is fake. If it's fake, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose him. So the, the, the deal here is that if there was anyone else, he would say, Ana ati kumbi. I will replace it for you. Allah, if when Allah said, is there a Lord other than Allah who could replace it for you, who could bring it back to you? If there was anyone, he would say, yes, here I am. Since there is no one, then indeed this is Allah the Almighty who is the bestower of all these favors upon man. So man ilahun ghayrullah yati kumbi. Is there any Lord other than Allah who can bring it back to you, who can restore it for you, there is no one. So Allah says, this is the ayat, this claim is such, this is a claim, this is, a, this is an evidence, and, and, and observe how we, we bring ayat in through different phrases, we, we, we bring them from different, through different perspectives, different angles, so this such ayah are explained and they are repeated in different ways. So they yet turn away and do not take heed. 
Next one. قل أرأيتكم إن أتاكم عذاب الله بغتة أو جهرة هل يهلك إلا القوم الظالمون؟ Say قل say أرأيتكم Have you seen if the عذاب of Allah comes to you suddenly or openly then who will be destroyed through with that عذاب us the humble the pious or القوم الظالمون the wrongdoers so who will be destroyed except the, the wrongdoers so عذاب of Allah عز وجل the one that they deserve to be punished are those who الذين ظلموا the ones that have committed zulm and they will be the target of the adab. So adab won't go to anyone else. It's such people that will be targeted with the adab of Allah. Al-Yuhlak illa al-Qawmu al-Zalimun. Wa ma nursiru al-Mursaleen illa mubashireen wa mundireen fa man amana wa aslaha fa la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzalun. And we do not send messengers except mubashireen as people who are bearers of good news wa mundireen and as warners. Fa man amana Whoever believed and whoever reformed himself, there'll be no fear on him, nor will they grieve. La khawfun alayhim, there'll be no fear on them in regards to their future. Walahum yahzanun, and they'll have no grief over in regards to that which has happened in the past. So they will not miss on anything in the, of the dunya. And they'll have no concern, fear of the, of the, of the, of the hereafter. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith, he said that a person will be taken from the people of dunya, the one who had enjoyed all the luxuries on the planet. And he'd never for, for a second experienced any hardship in the dunya. And on the day of judgment, he will be given a short tour of Jahannam. And when he'd be brought back, it, and if angels will ask him, have you ever seen any comfort in your life? He'd say, by Allah, I've never seen any comfort in, in my life. That sight and the and the glance over Jahannam and that moments that he would spend around in the environment will make him forget all the comforts of the dunya. And on the and the opposite is someone who had spent his life in miserable, most of life he was suffering, and then he he'd be put through uh, a jannah and he would forget everything of, of any uh, the hardship and the pain of the dunya. They will not miss on anything. They will have, they'll have no fear for the future and no uh, grievance, no kind of grief over the losses in the past. So the one, there are two types of people. There are those who believed and aslaha. Simple. This is the khulasa. This is the summary of, of the task of a believer in this worldly life. Iman and islah. So you, you have, you express your faith in Allah, and thereafter, you make an effort to remain on the on, on the good side. So you keep on trying. You keep on trying, and if you make an error, you fix it. If you make an error, you fix it. If you sin, it happens in sin, you, you do tawbah. And you remain optimistic with Allah. You do not lose hope. People tend to only be hopeful when they do well in life. As mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْمَهُ when people do well in life, they say, my Lord has really valued me. And when they're put through a test, they say, they say, my Lord has abandoned me. So believers are the ones, they have Iman and they have Islah. They, they, they try and fix their deed and their deeds and they keep their Iman. Then for them, it's eternal joy and eternal bliss. And contrary to those who do Iman and Islah, Contrary to those are those who belied our, our, our signs. Yamasum al Adab, Adab will strike them, Adab will touch them, Adab will reach them. Bimakan Yusukun, because of their disobedience and because they used to disobey. Ulla Akuru lakum in the Khaza in Allahi, Wala Alam al Ghaiba, Wala Aku Dulakum in the Malam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was calling people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and the people, rather than pondering over his message, they would, they, they would say, what is the sign, what is the evidence that you have, you are, you've been appointed by Allah as a messenger? So sometimes they would come up with funny, funny demands. One demand, one of their demands was, okay, if you are appointed by Allah and if Allah, you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn these mountains into the mountains of gold and silver and, and grant us the plenty of provision of dunya so we don't have to, to do travel towards Sham and to Yemen uh, in summer and in winter in order to earn a living. 
So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you the treasures of the heavens and the earth. So this was one demand. So remove, finish our poverty. This is the first demand. And sometimes was wala alamul ghaib. Sometimes I would say, okay, if you get told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you know the future, if you know what happens after death, tell us what's going to, going to happen to us after 50 years. So we start preparing for it. So he, the, the demand was to tell us what will happen in the future. And what's, what's going to happen, to, and, and this will give us some, some clarity and some understanding that you are uh, definitely, you have divine appointment. So tell us what's going to happen tomorrow and tell us about the future. And the third was, was that how is it possible that a human being like us, he comes and he becomes an advocate of the Almighty Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to send an advocate, it should be an angel who should come to us in his true form. And we then, um, we then are convinced that this is, um, this is a superhuman and this is from Allah. So the Almighty Allah has rejected all three demands of the, of the signs. It was said, Say, I do not say to, the, to you that I have the khaza'in Allah, I have the treasures of Allah the Almighty. No do I say that I know the unseen. No do I say to you that I'm an angel. So in this ayah, all three claims were refuted. First, those who wanted the the sons, the, those who wanted the mountains of gold and silver, it was said to them, La, la Allah. Say to them, I do not possess the treasures of the of Allah the Almighty. So don't make such demands to me. And the second was, Wala they, 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 were, they were saying, Tell us what's gonna what's gonna happen to us tomorrow. So and and and, and the days up and the day, other days to come, so we can prepare for it. So they wanted to know the future. And the third was Wala malak. Some wanted to, to receive an angel from Allah. So Rasulullah says, I am neither of the three. In illa ma yuha ilayya. I only follow that which has been revealed to me. To me. Ma yuha ilayya, whatever has been revealed to me when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches me something, I pass it on to you. When he does not teach, when he, then I'm not able to pass it on to you. When in attabi'u illa ma yuha ilayya, I only follow that which is done wahi to me. Say, is the one who is the blind the same as that person who is the seeing one? So can this can a seeing person and a blind one be the same? Can a seeing one and a blind person be the same? So do you not see? So do you not give thought? Here, there are two people mentioned. One is Al-A'ma and the other is Al-Basir. A'ma is blind. Al-A'ma is the blind person, the one whose eyes um, are not functioning. Just it was said up there, قُلْ أَرَيْتَكُمْ إِنْ أَتَاكُمْ إِنْ أَتَاكُمْ What was it? Um, up here. قُلْ أَرَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ So that is mentioned here. That Allah wants to say that I do not possess the control over your hearing and to or over your uh, other divine bestowments. So al yastawil ama al basir, someone who is blind can never be the same in terms of benefit as to the living, uh, to seeing person. So al ama al basir, if if we literally take it, can a, a blind person and can a person who can see can they, them two ever be the same? In this dunya, no, not even in this dunya, they're the same. Blind has special needs. And the Basir, the one who can see, does not have special needs. Blind cannot drive. Basir can drive. Ama needs help and Basir does not need help. So that is, Allah says, can the Ama and the Basir, can the blind and can the seeing one, can they be the same? Then no, they, then himself answers. Uh, but so do you not then give thought do you not ponder so they're not the same because al-ama and al basir but but here as i said this is not about physical uh, blindness this is to do with the physical of the the with the state of the heart state of the mind some hearts are blind some hearts are unable to hear 
So that is the implication of the meaning of the ayah. Do you not give thought? Do you not give thought? And warn with this Quran, those people who fear to be yuhsharu, to be reckoned and gathered ila rabbihim towards their Lord. For those people, they said, I'm in duty for them. There is nothing, there is none other than Allah, any protector or, a, or an intercessor. So they may become righteous and they became God, the God fearing. This is similar to the ayat that was mentioned at the start of Surah Al Anam. This Quran is revealed to me, so I may warn you with this Quran and I may warn all those to whom this Quran reaches. So warn through this Quran those people who fear that they will be gathered towards their Lord. For them, there will not remain a, a protector or, 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 or an intercessor. So all your enemies will be. Uh, so Allah is the only protector and only someone who rescues people. So they may become God conscious and so they may become righteous and, and they may fear Allah. What we notice in these two ayats is the what is, is the role of a Nabi. A Nabi is acts literally, practically, someone who warns people, who educates people, who gives them, who brings them hope and who brings them joy. The Nabi is not, his role is not to give wealth to people. His role is not to give children to people. His role is not to predict and prophesy and of the future events. That is not what the messengers are sent for. Unfortunately, people, when they, when, they, when they speak to a messenger or a godly person, they only want to get closer to him because of their dunya. And nowadays, you see people having a relationship with Malama not to, not to fix their, their lives, but in order to get some kind of ta'weez, some kind of ruqya, some kind of dua, that if they read, then opportunities at work come their way in abundance. So the, the way people see... Uh, the role of a sheikh, the role of an alim, the role of a, a teacher is that he fixes your dunya for you. And Allah says that's not the role of a, of a Nabi. A Nabi is not meant to, to, to fix dunya for the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixes whomever he wants. It is very important to remember this because people go to, 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 to now, why do people go to shrines? We were talking about hadith um, a few weeks ago. Hadi is the animals of sacrifice which are sent to Mecca. People now send Hadi animals of sacrifice to shrines and they are they think that there's nothing wrong with it. And there is everything wrong with it. Because everything wrong with it, you are treating a shrine as, as at par with the, the Holy Kaaba. And the Holy Kaaba has been chosen by Allah the Almighty to, 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 to perform that function. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reside in the Kaaba. But it's to perform that function that the lovers and those who have been who not had who, who who didn't have the chance to meet the the men appointed by Allah when they when their passion hits them hard they're able to find satisfaction solace and comfort by visiting these these places which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has has given such prominence to. So anyway, this the this ayat and the next ayat. These two ayats, they explain the role of a messenger. What is a Nabi meant to do? And after a Nabi, if you have a Shaykh, if you have a teacher, if you have an Ustad, do not, you know, you're not, you, you know, your relationship with him should help you learn from that, that, that Shaykh, that Ustad. This meeting, how to prepare for meeting with their Lord. How to prepare to to meet with, 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 with the Lord. There shouldn't be any other thing to do with ilm or even khaza'inullah or, or, or seeing those strange phenomena, these karamats or these kind of um, special uh, yani miracles. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to see them, look at them, find them to be human beings like other human beings, but learn from them how to prepare for meeting with Allah the Almighty. If ta'weez is permissible, now ta'weez is must be avoided. 
must be awarded. It's not something that mashaikh prefer. It's not something that they, they like. It is something which is mentioned by from some sahaba that for, for two, some 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 alimah give permission to it. One is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, "There's nothing wrong with the ruqya as long as there's no shirk in it." And so, if the content of a state, and, and 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 according to another narration, some some sahaba they had their children, and with their children they would those they couldn't learn the duas for themselves. So they wrote the dua and they put it in the child's neck. So if it is of that type, then that, that, that's taking it to, to, to that level. If there's, uh, and if, 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 if there's a dua or something, which child is not able to read or, or someone is majnoon, he's insane, and he's not able to read and they need that protection. And if you, you write it, you write in something and put it, give it to the, to, to, to the needy, then maybe somewhat permissibility, even though it's not the ideal, because the Prophet said that the 70,000 people that will enter Jannah without Hisab, one special feature of theirs is that they stay away from such kind of evil, such kind of dodgy practices. So, but if you have a ruqya, if, if you have a ta'weez, the content of which is not comprehensible, not comprehensible, you can't understand, you don't know what it is. It's not an ayat of the Quran. It's not a hadith, it's not a dua, or it's not the known asma Allah al-Husna, it's something awkward, something strange, then it should be avoided. It is better avoided, unless, now there's the, 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 there's more great area start. I think it's better, I'm not going into it. But if, if it's perfectly fine, if you yourself wrote a dua, you have a child, and you want the child to, to be saved from, say, evil eye, and you think the child is, mashallah, very uh, impressive, he's, he's good looking, and the, and the child is not able to read dua for himself, and you wrote the dua. Or you wrote, and put it on the child's neck, then inshallah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. That, that much is permissible. But whether that's uh, better, the better preference of the ulama and the mashaykh is always been to, to do, to do, to recite and do them on, on do ruqya on the them blow on the, on the children. In fact, there is a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu used to do some ruqya for Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhum as well. At this moment in time, top of my my head, I don't remember the reference, but I did read read some some such accounts. We've talked about. The role, the, the Dalai of Tawheed, and we talked about the role of a prophet. What do messengers do? This is the methodology of prophets. And now to move on to this ayat number 52, and ayat number 52 is the only bit that deals about, that talks about the, the, the function, the way the prophets look at things. things. Now, it's a, it's a perspective, isn't it? Worldview, as, as they say, the religion through the lens of something. If an architect looks at a building, he looks at things uh, in a different way than a cleaner does. The cleaner looks at, at, at a building and his what he's looking at is very different from what an architect is looking at. And if a, a designer or if, a, if, if say for instance, um, a businessman is looking at a building, he's, he's looking at something else, he's looking at location, he's looking at the car park, he's looking at accessibility, he's looking at, say, for instance, the other uh, amenities, and same goes to, to a property developer or, the, or, or a letting agent. They all have different perspectives of things. Same building, they're looking at it through different lenses, and one will praise it, and the other will condemn it, and one will be comfortable, happy with it, and the other will be, he'll find it disgusting. So. It's, it's, all, it's all in the perspective, it's, it's the lens that, that you look through. Ayat number 52 teaches us a lens. How do you look at dunya and how you look at people and how do you, how do you grade people? Who should be where? So, and, and, the, and the content, the background of this ayah, the, the Shan al-Nuzul, Asbab al-Sabab al-Nuzul of this ayah 52 is that in, in Makkah Mukarramah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was there, he was pre preaching and Abu Talib was alive, uh, some and, and, and people of Mecca, the, the chiefs of Quraysh, they were expressing their dismay and their, their anger, frustration 
that Rasulullah would not stop criticizing, condemning their, their, their false deities. They came to Abu Talib and said, your, your, your nephew, he's always surrounded by all these peasants and these, these working class, lower working class people, the, the slaves that we've freed and people that come to clean our houses and people that low, low, low grade. And he's always surrounded by them. And we want to listen to his message as well. Sometimes we feel that we need to listen to, to him as well. And we need to talk to him. So we want to engage with him, but he's always surrounded by such, such poor folk peasants uh, that you know, we, we find even the thought of us sitting, being with them in the same setting, in the same environment, at the same level, that's, you know, that's disgusting to us. We can't bear that thought, let alone actually being part of it. So if you were to ask your nephew to, 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 to spare a time, then only we have the audience with him. Only, he only speaks to us. And at that time, no peasants, no poor, no these worker cleaners, nobody should be allowed to, to be with him. Then maybe, maybe we, we are able to, to kind of exchange ideas and maybe we, we are able to bridge the, 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 the gap. When Rasulullah sallallahu heard about this, he was reluctant. He was not comfortable. And the people, those peasants that, that, that they called uh, were Bilal radiallahu anhu, Suhaib Rumi radiallahu anhu, who led the funeral of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And people, Ammar ibn Yasir, uh, and the, the peop people of that kind, um, they were, they, they referred to them as low class. They said, we can't share a room with them. So <clears throat> Rasulullah was initially reluctant. He was not comfortable that he should set a time when these people wouldn't be allowed. Uh, but then he did, he, he, he did mashwara with his other with companions. And Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, these guys are not going to, to, learn, to, to listen to you. But now they've come up with an excuse. So leave no excuse for them, Ya Rasulullah. So if they want a time of a, such as such an audience, such an opportunity, so okay, fine. These are our the 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 the, the Sahaba. They are your 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 they, they, they're your people. They are our people. They wouldn't take offense if we said to them, please don't come after Maghrib because Maghrib Isha is time reserved for the elite or the chiefs. So don't come after Zohar or don't come in the morning. They wouldn't mind on certain days. Please do not come. They wouldn't mind. They will keep themselves busy. But let these people have no excuse uh, uh, from, of, of not listening to, to you. And Rasulullah thought about doing this that when this ayat was revealed. And let's look at the, the meaning of the ayah. And then we'll look at the lens that I talked about earlier. And do not send away those who invoke, call upon their Lord, in the morning and in the evening. They call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening. What do they call him for? They call upon him through ibadah, salah, through dua, i.e. through dhikr, through istighfar. So here the Runa Rabbah Bilghadati Wal Ashi has two meanings. One is that they engage in salah in the morning and they engage in salah in the evening. So they play Salatul Fajr and Salatul Asr or Salatul Maghrib. That is Yad Runa Rabbah Bilghadati Wal Ashi. And the other is that they are people who are constantly busy in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. In that, in that case, Ghadat wal Ashi won't have its literal meaning. It'll be, day, it'll be just like day in, day out. So they call upon their Lord constantly, all the time they're busy in the remembrance of Allah. Yuriduna wajh. They desire to please Him. They, they, they desire, their desire is to please Allah the Almighty. The wazifa is not to, to, to acquire worldly prestige. Many people, many of us, may Allah SWT forgive us all. We do our dhikr, we have our salah, special salah, we have special adhkar to get the worldly comfort. Worldly comfort, there's nothing wrong with it. It's permissible, it's halal. But some dhikr should be purely for the sake of Allah SWT. Our sas, later sas, Shaykh Musa used to say that when we find out that there's a special occasion, there's a special occasion, special moment in Ramadan when du'as are accepted. So, uh, Maghrib, at Maghrib time, Iftari time, we raise our hands in dua. What do we ask for? And at that time, we raise our hands in dua at Tahajjud time. And at, at other okay, Khatm al-Quran time. And at other such occasions, we raise our hands. And what do we ask for? We ask, oh Allah, I'm not, my shop's not doing well. Oh Allah, grant barakat in my shop. Grant barakat in my efforts. Oh Allah, I'm struggling to find a job. Oh Allah, I, I don't have... I'm struggling to get visa. I'm struggling to get, oh, my, my knee hurts. And this is, this is typical that he used to say, my knee hurts, my Lord. 
Um, I have uh, so worldly things that they they occupy our mind, and Allah mentions here, "Yuridu nawajha." They desire Allah's pleasure and Allah's approval. This can only happen when a believer's heart and mind is totally fixed at Allah and is filled with the muhabbat of Allah Azza wa I forgot to go into detail up, up here. وَلَكِنْ قَصَدْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ I think I'm talking about it as well. وَلَكِنْ uh, Their hearts heartened and shaitan made it beautiful to them whatever they were doing. So even when they were tested with trouble and pain, they weren't able, they, they did not resort to dua. In fact, they either those troubles and those the hardship took them further away from Allah the Almighty. So that is here. Uh, these people are totally very different from those that are mentioned up there, that they, they don't even remember Allah in the, 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 the time of hardship and, and, and burden. Whereas these people, they are al-ghadatun ashi yuridun wajha. They're busy in the dhikr of Allah, trying to please Him. Ma alayka min hisabihim min shay. It is from their hisab and their account. You are not. There's nothing onto you. I.e., you're not responsible for any of their conduct. Wa ma min hisabika alayhim min shay. And from your account, there's nothing onto them. They're not responsible for your conduct. Fatatul dahum. So you may send them away. So they have nothing to do. If you sit together in the one roof, you won't. Add, add any anything to it, it won't it won't be the case that because of their presence your burden will increase or because of your presence their burden will increase it so you would run away from someone because he adds his his burden uh, he load himself he, he loads load his burden on onto you and he's, he'll offload his 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 burden onto you so you do want to take uh, to uh, carry their burden so then you would keep a distance but in this case this this will not happen. So there's no excuse for you to repel them and to send them away. And if you did, فَتَكُونَ مِنَ mean You will be from amongst the wrong rules. Remember Surah Abu Sawa Tawalla and جَاءَهُ الْعَمَى وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعَهُ الذِّكْرَ They come to you in order to acquire tazkiyah and in order to get this, this refinement of the heart and the soul. And so with that intention, they come to you so when they come to you with that intention, if you repel them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you to the earth, to, 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 to the planet, where you zakkihim, where you allimuhum al-kitab wal-hikmah. Your duty is to, to cleanse their souls and, and, and purify their, their, their souls. And they come to you for that very reason. If you then repel them, you will be from amongst wrongdoers. It would be just like you are you, you refuse to perform your function and your duty and your carry out your, 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 uh, your obligation. So this is Allah Ta'ala says, you're not allowed to let such people go away. Now here is the discussion now. We've learned the ayah that, so when, when this ayat was revealed, Umar Dhanahu, he, he resorted to Tawbah. Ya Rasulullah, I made an error. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli dhambin wa atubu ilayh. So he was very remorseful after the, the revelation of this ayah. That, that we should not do this. Now, as I, I mentioned about the, uh, the, the lens. Where, where, where is the lens here? The lens here is in, in the fact that how do you grade people? How do you judge people? People who do not believe in akhirah and people who do not believe in accountability before Allah, all they care about in this dunya is fulfilling their, their desires, fulfilling their needs. So they want to get married. They, have, they want to have access to, to, to the women. They want to have good companions, good spouses, and they want to have, uh, obviously, good houses, and they want to have plenty food, riches of the dunya. Um, so they want to have the, the protection and strength and, 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 and aid, uh, wealth and, and kind of armies. So this is considered to be uh, helpful. So whoever amasses all this, his rank is raised. Oh, this is, wow, this guy is more rich. The, the 100 riches, he's made it to the top 100 riches in the world. Forbes magazine publishes, prints their name. Um, this guy has added to his fortune and the other guy has lost, has fallen down. So this is, they become the envy for, for mankind. Uh, whereas, just because that's the, that's, that's the lens that, that they're looking at. This person has the more capacity to fulfill his desires than, than anyone else. So he somehow has become more important than anyone else. 
Because Allah Ta'ala says, that's not how I look at people. My way of looking at people is وجها, who has how much regard for Allah the Almighty. So those who have the highest regard for Allah, they are the most important. In fact, in their company, you would find tawfiq and strength. So that is yuriduna wajha, which I said is this link to the ayah in Surah An-Nur. And these are the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are more important and more valuable than the, those who acquire the riches of the, of the world. <coughs> وَكَذَلِكَ فَتَنَّا بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لِيَقُولُوا أَهَا أُولَاءِ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ بَيْنِنَا أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَعْنَمَ بِالشَّاكِرِينَ And thus we fatanna, we try and test some of them with the others. So they then say, أَهَا أُولَا أَهَا أُولَا Are these the ones, the poor ones, that Allah has favoured upon them, Allah has favoured them, مِنْ بَيْنِنَا from amongst us? أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَعْنَمَ بِالشَّاكِرِينَ Isn't Allah more aware of those who are grateful? So, fatanna ba'dhum bi ba'dhin. People are tested with one another. So they see, they look at someone and they consider him to be not worthy. Or because of him, because of his, his behavior, their own choices are affected. You look at someone and you want to be like him. And you, 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 you build a, an ideal, ideals in, in your mind just by looking at some other people. So those that you were looking at, they became a means of test for you. And you, you, you built your ideals around their, their achievements, so they became a test for you. And sometimes a, a poor and a needy knocks at your door asking for help, and that, he, that is a test for you. On the Day of Judgment, Allah will say to a woman, will say to a person, Ya, ya Abdi, uh, falam ta, falam ta I became uh, unwell, and you never paid me a visit. And say, My Lord, how come? How could you be, become unwell? And the Almighty Allah would say, didn't you know that an ex-servant of mine had become unwell? Had you visited him, you would have found me beside him. And Allah would say that, oh my, oh my slave, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. And again, Allah, the, the person will say that, um, I'd, you, how could you be hungry? And Allah would say, that person, a slave of mine was. So that is fatanna ba'dahum bi ba'd. One person is tested with the other. So Allah SWT says that so we made some above higher and the other lower, some, some in the upper class and others as, as, as lower class. This does not mean that there's the, the standard in the eyes of Allah is that it is, the, 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 the worldly status reflects their status in the eyes of Allah as Zawadal, not at all. Rubba ash'ath aghbar anil abwaab, that hadith comes to mind at this moment in time. There are many who are poor, covered in dust, uh, head, head disheveled, totally in, in very rugged clothes, but they are so close to Allah that if they take an oath against Allah, Allah Azza wa will definitely fulfill it. So, fatanna ba'dhum bi people are tested, some of them with the others. So, those who are at uh, poor, there's, uh, as I said, the class struggle. Okay, the class struggle is here mentioned here. Class a, a very popular concept in in sociology. Uh, the working class are always at uh, war against uh, bourgeois and then and they, they have the, 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 the tension between the classes. So Allah says that's it. I think that probably explains it better. So they say that are these who, the people that Allah has favored from amongst us? Yani, did Allah SWT choose these poor people? Are they better than us? This is what they, what they feel. Just because they're rich in the dunya, does not mean that the poor can't be right. Poor has poor can be right too. Aha ula imanna Allahu alayhim min baynina. Would do you they, they, even when the poor speaks the truth, the rich doesn't take it as as, as valid as serious, just because that richness the richness is in his head and that arrogance in his head, so he's deprived of benefiting from the from the 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 karimatul khayr or nasiha of the poor. Alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isn't Allah more aware of those who are shakir, who are grateful? This solves a, a puzzle for us. Why is it that many people are, they, they are, they have shukr, grateful, yet they are not rich. And Allah promises in the Quran that everyone who is grateful, Allah will give him more. So why is it that some, we, we see people that are very grateful, they're very, uh, they have a lot of shukr, but they're not rich. 
because they will have something that matters most, and that is that they will have hidayah. They will have tawfiq to, to pray tahajjud. They'll have tawfiq to, to do the righteous deeds. Their benefit, the, 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 the material strength that they have, they'll have tawfiq to, to spend it wisely. Subhanallah. Alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isn't Allah most aware, better aware of those who are grateful? I hope it makes sense what I'm talking about. I hope, I hope they're not being viewed as random shots. When those who believe in our, 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 our verses, they come to you, say, Salamun alaykum. Peace, peace upon you. Your Lord has written upon himself, Rahma and mercy. And that أنه من عمل منكم سوءا بجهالة that whoever does from amongst you does anything evil بجهالة in ignorance thereafter he repents تابا من بعدي thereafter he repents وأصلح and mends the, the error فأنه غفور الرحيم then surely he is غفور the most forgiving رحيم the most merciful وأصلح so the, the firstly here فَقُلْ وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Now, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ is only to those الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا And these are very people whom the kuffar, the, the chiefs of Mecca were saying, we can't be able to, we, we cannot sit in, in, with, with them. And Allah says, in their eyes, they're not important, but in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal, they are salamun alaykum. They are receiving the salam from Allah the Almighty. So the poor, the, those who were, when the Quran was revealed, and there were people who had, despite poverty, they would call upon their Lord morning and evening. They are the ones who are the recipients of this salam. salamun alaykum. And the promise that Allah SWT made us, that he would, be, he would be merciful. And this is again, I think I mentioned at the start of Surah Al-Anam, that when this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is mentioned there as well, there, 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 something similar, قُلْ سِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ انظروا كَيْفَ كَانَ It's here, sorry. Where did it go? كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِ قُلْ لِلَّهِ كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ So we mentioned, I mentioned here a bit in detail, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written upon him a rahma, that he, his rahmat will always be above and on top of his ghadab and his wrath. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, is never hasty in punishing people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and, and wants to forgive. So whoever does, an, uh, uh, who does an evil deed out of ignorance. But ignorance, and this we talked about tawbah in Surah Al-Nisa. I know it was probably a few months back. In Surah An-Nisa, where there was mention of Su'an Bijahala, that someone does commits a sin out of ignorance. It does not mean that he didn't know that it was a sin. Ignorance also means that when he committed the sin, he didn't realize how severe it was what he was doing. Temporarily, momentarily, his, his lust and his desire or whatever, his passion and his shahwa, it kind of over, it took, took, took hold of him and took him into or laziness or, or kind of whatever, hunger or whatever state that, that he was in, it took him into that state where he temporarily forgot about the, the evil consequences of, 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 of sinning. So then he, he did the sin because no wise, no wise person would ever commit the sin if he realized that um, the, the, the harm and the damage that, that sin, sin causes to, to an individual, no sane person would ever go near that. So whoever commits a sin out of ignorance, but then taba min ba'di, then repents after committing that sin. Wa aslah. Aslaha is that if that sin, if his behavior had made an impact on people around him, then he should try and fix it. Corporate social responsibility. Now, just like corporate social responsibility, similarly, there's individual social responsibility. So that's socially responsible, we, we should all be. And if you caused any damage to, to your surroundings, to your environment, and to, to the people and to the people around you, try and undo it. Try to, uh, Yani, they say now there's this they talk about offsetting carbon footprint, but that's again very, uh, we just had COP26, so maybe I think that it's uh, that all that, those thoughts are uh, haunting me and they're coming to my mind. But Aslaha, just like everything that's, that's discussed there, it is 
it has a role in our, our individual behavior. The reason why sinful acts are uh, de declared forbidden are because they cause damage to individual or to, to the society. So if someone commits, has been committed a sin, then aslaha, then he, part of the tawbah is islah, <clears throat> especially if it's to do with hukukul ibad. If it's to do with hukukullah, then maybe, inshallah, tawbah is enough. But then even then tawbah, there's a discussion here. If someone missed his salah and didn't pray for a long time, does he have to do qada? This is min ba'dihi wa aslaha. Then he needs to. If someone did summa athaba, what does he say here? Man amila minkum su'am bi jahalatin summa taba min ba'dihi wa aslaha. Aslaha means that if he's done something wrong, then if he's deprived of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should, he, should, he should pay them back. Just like there's in a famous hadith where the, where, where the lady comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Ya Rasulullah, my mother um, had made another that she had placed to, made a place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she would perform hajj, but she wasn't able to. Would it be okay if I do a hajj on her behalf? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, tell me, if your mom owed something to, owed some money to anyone, would you pay it on, on her behalf? She said, of course, Ya Rasulullah, I would pay. He said, so the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more, deserves more to be, uh, to be, to be fulfilled and, and to be taken care of. So same here, if someone owed money to someone, he'll pay. If someone didn't pray for a long time, didn't fast for a long time, now he's realized that he has made a mistake, he needs to make an effort. Whether he's able to do it, if someone started salah much late, 50, at the, if he, at the age of 50, didn't pray for the first 49 years, then well, obviously it's difficult, but at least there should be an effort. Try to, to undo the damage that's done. Try to pay the right, fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's deprived of. Then he reforms. Then surely Allah is what very, very most forgiving and the most merciful. Thus we explain the ayat. And so the path, Sabirul Mujrimin, so the path of the criminals becomes clear. <coughs> So this is, we talked about Sunnatullah, we talked about the Sunnatul Mursaleen, and we talked about the lens through which to look at the, 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 the universe and at the society. And we talked about, again, another Sunnatullah, كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ This is the Sunnatullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, punish, doesn't people, punish people instantly. He gives them chance to repent. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ This we explain the ayat, so the path of the criminals. And what happens to them, their, their destiny, and, and, and what happens to them all, it becomes clear to everyone and nobody remains in town. Qul inni nuheed, inshallah, from this ayah, we'll continue next week. Uh, Asr Salah time is changing. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, maybe it'll change further next week. But inshallah, we'll, we'll look at this at the start of the lesson uh, class next week. 1.30 will start as normal. Hopefully, inshallah, and finish around about this time. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, I hope it was everything what I said was clear and there was no confusion. If there is any, you can, we, we can start with it. Please, you can raise it at the start of the next, next class. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.